Well, with everyone staying home, you'd think that delivery would be booming, but new data from Alex Partners shows that while consumers have ordered out during the pandemic, drive through was actually the preferred method for takeout, followed up by traditional takeout and then curbside pickup. Third-party providers actually ranked last and were even less favorable among older consumers. Now, the good news is that analysts at Morningstar and BTIG say that in-store transactions, along with carryout and curbside pickup, are the more profitable options for restaurants with delivery being mo more costly for both consumers and restaurants alike. Carryout is big business and will continue to be. It's why restaurants like Chipotle have installed in-store pickup shelves and Chipotle lanes for to-go orders. Domino's also has carryout kiosks. CEO Rich Allison says that it will be an important part of the profit equation going forward. And analysts add that the closer brands are positioned to consumers, the better equipped they are for carryout. And when customers interact with restaurants in their own native apps or in-store, there's no data data sharing, which of course is a win for the restaurants. But delivery is also important for new customer acquisitions and growing business in general. And that's why you're seeing basically every restaurant company, with the exception of Domino's, of course, teaming up with these different aggregators. Now, when you talk to analysts about what a potential uh, Grubhub and Uber Eats merger might look like, they say the only thing that really matters here is if there is consolidation, costs could wind up going up even more for restaurants. So that's something we'll definitely keep an eye on. And I know Deirdre Bosa has more on that. Deirdre? Well, Kate, the big question for the food delivery apps is, can they ever be profitable, especially with some of the restaurants taking the power back into their own hands and as more and more cities consider caps on commissions? Now, here is the state of the food delivery market in the U.S. currently. DoorDash, number one, with nearly 47 percent of the market. An Uber Eats Grubhub deal would put their combined share at a close second. Consolidation, though, if that does happen, may not be the silver bullet, though, that investors are looking for. For one, Uber Eats is losing a lot of money and gross bookings growth has been decelerating. Grubhub, which has been profitable, is losing money amid the pandemic and growth in its key metrics like daily active meals and active diners. That has also slowed. Now, DoorDash, meanwhile, has been gaining an even greater lead in the market, according to this Edison Trends data. That orange line you see is Uber and Grubhub's Hub combined market share growth, and that shows a downward trajectory, where that blue one is DoorDash showing an upward trajectory. Now, when DoorDash does go public, and I'm told by a source that they're still on track for an offering this year or next, we could see greater operational efficiency if these numbers are true, and that would be hard for the others to compete with. Now, guys, there is profitability precedence in this space. Look at Chinese food delivery giant Meituan. It went public in 2018 with losses and it had a $50 billion valuation. Now it actually generates cash and look at that steep rise. It has a market cap of more than $100 billion. But guys, it may not be as straightforward for the players here in the U.S. There's a number of policy challenges in addition to the one that Kate outlined, such as the employment status of their drivers, those commission caps, uh, and of course, antitrust, which could prevent the Uber Grubhub deal from ever going through.